music. It's found in every known culture, past and present, varying widely between times and places. Music affects a wide range of emotions and has evolved through the years, just as America has evolved. The westward expansion doubled the size of the United States in 1803 with the Louisiana Purchase. America grew by leaps and bounds from that date, and old world musical influences followed that expansion. Sedalia, Missouri, was born on the open prairie as part of the tail end of the westward expansion, when General George R. Smith filed plans for a town to be called Sedville in November of 1857. The city officially incorporated in 1860 and changed its name to Sedalia. The railway reached Sedalia in January of 1861, stalled due to the Civil War, then became the catalyst for Sedalia's rapid growth and development. By the 1860s, Sedalia had already been a railhead for the first great cattle drives, and two railroads brought almost 2,000 jobs, commerce. An economic development to the area. The area was booming. This prosperity created flourishing adult entertainment options, including saloons, hotels, brothels, gambling dens, and the like. The opportunities for piano players were obvious. Piano players syncopated a mix of old world style music, African slave music, Native American music, and Southern Hemisphere music. This new rhythm, mixed from a potpourri of musical styles, is what we know today as ragtime. Other prosperous places in America had similar elements of a ragtime environment, but none had the collection of talent than those that came together in Missouri. Most of the piano players brought to Missouri by these opportunities were those who wanted to write down and publish their compositions. Time, the writing and publishing of ragtime was secondary. Their real money came from playing. But in Missouri, there were a dozen publishers who were willing to take a chance on it. By the early 1900s, Missouri was home to a collection of ragtime giants that was unmatched: Tom Turpin, James Scott, Arthur Marshall, Scott Hayden, Louis Chavan. Charles L. Johnson, Charles Hunter, and Scott Joplin. Sedalia's prosperity, along with the establishments for piano players to perform in, brought to Missouri pianists who wanted to write down and publish their compositions. One of those pianists was a young man named Scott Joplin. Joplin was born in Texas in 1868. Then moved with his family to Texarkana, Arkansas, around 1880. What little musical training he had given to him was probably from a German immigrant, who typically tutored wealthy landowners' children. Joplin left the Texarkana area in his teens to become a vocalist with the quartet. He meandered from one venue to another, and finally headquartered in Honest John Turpin's Silver Dollar Saloon in St. Louis. During the late 1880s, playing the piano. In about 1894, Joplin wanted a more substantial life, and he relocated to Sedalia, Missouri. Some say he met a fellow ragtimer, Otis Saunders, at the 1893 Columbian World's Fair in Chicago, and followed Otis to Sedalia. Upon his arrival, he found that Sedalia was a saloon town. And there were opportunities there, but what seemed to draw him there was the recent opening of the George R. Smith College, established by the Methodist Church, for the moral and intellectual culture of the colored people of the West. After enrolling in the college, Joplin played saloons as well as dances and parties to help with college and living costs. He also gave piano lessons and was a member of the Queen City Cornet Band for a while. After 1896, he traveled with several vocal groups. Joplin then joined a four-member vocal quartet called the Texas Medley Quartet, and embarked on a several-state tour. It was while touring with the quartets that Joplin began publishing. 
While touring, Joplin returned to Sedalia frequently, where he continued to teach and perform. By late 1898, he had written several rags and began to seek out a publisher. First, he approached A.W. Perry & Sons, a Sedalia music store publisher, who turned him down. Joplin then ventured to Kansas City, where Carl Hoffman took a chance on him and published his original rag. Joplin continued teaching, writing, and performing, still playing in Sedalia saloons. In December 1898, Joplin became one of the charter members of a new social organization for black Sedalians called the Maple Leaf Club at 121 East Main Street. Five blocks away was the publisher that would send the club's name around the world, the music store of John Stark and Son. It was at the Maple Leaf Club where Joplin created classic ragtime music and on August the 10th, 1899, entered into a contract with John Stark to publish The Maple Leaf Rag. Stark published it in September of 1899, and it transformed American music. Joplin became probably the first African-American performer to earn royalties on the piece, and those royalties were paid to him for at least five years. Maple Leaf Rag became one of the first pieces of sheet music to sell a million copies. It became the one rag that players and listeners around the world could not get out of their heads, ever. The following year, the song's journey around the world began when both Stark and Joplin left Sedalia for St. Louis. For the time he lived in Sedalia, Scott Joplin created a music that became America's most popular and best-selling music for 20 years. The unique syncopations Joplin wrote were designated rags, and his musical formatting for them became the standard, and then influenced most of the modern genres that developed in the United States. His Maple Leaf Rag ranks Joplin among the great composers our nation has produced, and thanks to him, Sedalia can call itself a place where America's music began. Joplin's productivity more than justified the nickname King of Ragtime. He wrote 34 original ragtime pieces, a ballet, the ragtime dance, a book of instrumental ragtime, the Redback Book, two operas, along with at least 22 other songs, waltzes, and piano pieces. During the first half of the 20th century, such original ragtimers as Otis Saunders, Arthur Marshall, and Tom Ireland kept ragtime alive in Sedalia. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, there were more memorial ragtime concerts by Bob Darch, Arthur Marshall, Tom Ireland, and local instrumental bands. The Scott Joplin Memorial Foundation installed a large granite monument commemorating the Maple Leaf Club site and honoring Sedalia's classic ragtime pioneers. In 2016, a marker commemorating the signing of the Maple Leaf Rag contract was placed at 114 East 5th Street. Sedalia's tradition of local concerts and programs began anew in 1974 with the infamous Ozark Music Festival. Later that same year, the first Scott Joplin Ragtime Music Festival was held. For four days, many major ragtime performers from around the country played on Sedalia stages. It was repeated in 1975, and after a brief pause, the festival resumed in 1983 with Joplin's first day of issue, U.S. Postage Stamp, and has continued annually. Over the years, nearly everyone involved in the field of ragtime has been at a Sedalia festival. Today, many of the original festival elements are still incorporated, with activities divided between paid concerts, symposia, and free concerts in the historic downtown. For over 100 years now, Joplin's legacy in Sedalia has lived on, thanks in part to the nonprofit Scott Joplin International Ragtime Foundation. It is dedicated 
to preserving the importance of ragtime music, Scott Joplin's importance to it, and Sedalia's role in its history. Scott Joplin's importance to ragtime and American music is unmatched. Joplin alone transformed all the old world styles of music into a syncopated form of musical gold and shared his genius with the world. That music and the Scott Joplin legacy lives on today in Sedalia, Missouri. <laughs>